Hi, Deb. Hi, Deb. Hi, good morning. An estimated five to 6,000 Americans are diagnosed each year with ALS. Initial symptoms include muscle weakness, loss of balance, and slurred speech can be subtle at first, and it could take up to 12 to 14 months to be accurately diagnosed with ALS. Joining us now to discuss ALS and a new treatment option is Dr. Homeland, attending neurologist and medical director of the Neuromuscular Center MDA Clinic at Dent Neurological Institute and ALS patient, John Hamilton. Doctor, just exactly what is ALS? So ALS is a neurologic disorder that um, affects muscles. So it makes a person weak and it can start anywhere in the body. So if it, for instance, starts in a hand, it spreads upward and the arm gets weak and it can come to involve speech and swallowing or what we dread the most, breathing. So it makes a person very weak over a short period of time. And as you said, this is, it goes quickly and some patients may not survive this for more than three to five years. Doctor, what physical function loss do you typically see in ALS patients? Yeah, so the, the the disease is extremely personal. So in other words, it affects one person very different from another. So John here, he's, for him, he started in his legs so they can become weak and unsteady and fall. Or it can be a hand where <clears throat> it's difficult to hold on to eating utensils and write. And what we fear the most is when it starts, and we call them the bulbar innervated muscles, when it has to do with speech and swallowing, that people can then start with slurred speech and difficulty swallowing. So it really depends on where the disease starts. But they all have one thing in common, that it progresses. Doctor, what is the new treatment option, and what does it mean for people with ALS? Yeah, so the new treatment option is called Radicava. And Radicava became available in September. So this was amazing to us. We haven't had any treatment for new treatment for more than 20 years. So this is a treatment. It's an infusion that the patient gets quite frequently. And we know that it doesn't cure the disease, but it does slow down the disease. So this was truly a welcome addition that gives us a, a treatment option and gave our patients some hope. And that's where we are right now. Thank you. John, can you share our stor your story with us about being diagnosed and living with ALS? Yes, I'd be happy to. My road to being diagnosed with ALS had started when I had fallen and injured my right ankle, and it wasn't healing, so I, had, I decided to get an x-ray taken and met with an orthopedic doctor. When I, as I'm meeting with the orthopedic doctor, and he's examining my legs and move, having moved my ankles, and he said, John, why are your legs so weak? And I told him, I had worked for over 30 years as a carpenter doing heavy construction, so I had figured that my legs were just getting tired, that they were getting worn out. And he said to me, no, John, he said, for your age and what you've done all your life, your legs should be a lot stronger than that. So he had me get up and walk for him. And as he watched me walk, he said, we need to get you in to see a neurologist as soon as possible. He said, I don't know if you have some nerve damage that is, uh, some pinched nerves that are creating some nerve damage in your legs. So that was my road to, the, that was the start of my road to being diagnosed with uh, ALS. And I was, uh, referred to see Dr. Holman, and he is my neurologist, my doctor, and that was the start of my, my road. Mm. John, what advice do you have for others living with or caring for people with ALS? My advice, uh, it's just to surround yourself with as much support groups as you can. Um, there are a lot of support groups out there that are available. Myself, I, I have a tremendous support group with, with my family and close friends. Um, so that's the way I'm, I'm, I'm living with it. Just um, looking ahead, uh, uh, making your life to, you have to accommodate your life with, to, with to battle the disease, um, just trying to stay in the right frame of mind. But what I would just like to bring out of this uh, uh, interview, if I could, is just to educate the people of the symptoms that are there so that they can get in and get diagnosed earlier. In my case, it started in my legs. So I, was, I started by tripping and stumbling a lot because the gait, my feet were starting to drop. The disease causes your feet to drop. That's where I was, I was tripping and stumbling. Um, my legs were getting weak whenever I would carry a substantial amount of weight. 
I'm losing my balance, falling a lot. That was the onstart of, of the ALS in my case. So if I can just bring uh, awareness to that so that the people can listen to their bodies and say, hey, you know, I'm experiencing that, them symptoms. So maybe I should start seeing a neurologist to get an opinion. Thank you. Doctor, is there anything else you'd like our viewers to know about ALS? I think, as John said, it's important to people are aware of this. Uh, it is an uncommon disease. It's maybe a total of 20,000 people in this country uh, that has it. And it's said that to be diagnosed one new patient every hour and a half. So if people are worried and they notice weakness and so forth, the first thing to do is not to think that they have ALS, but to seek physicians' input and take it from there. Doctor, where can we go for more information? So the, for the drug in itself, uh, it's called radicava.com that has nice information about the drug. There is a phone number there. You can actually call and talk to a person about this particular drug. And if you want information about ALS itself, there are excellent websites, the Muscular Dystrophy Association, MDA, and the ALS Association. They all have websites that nicely describes this and can actually then guide people to see the professional health professionals that can advise and help people. I'd like to thank you both for taking the time to talk with us today. Have a good day. Thank, thank you. you. You too. Bye.